Good morning. Good morning. And here are the notes. Uh, unlike me, they're short and sweet. <laughs> Andrew is on holiday next week from the 29th to the 6th inclusive. As usual, any inquiries to me, please. Next Sunday, the 30th, it's me preaching back in the phone booth. I haven't managed to turn into Superman yet, but that's a blessing because none of you want to see me with my other pants on the ground. <laughs> on the 6th, it's the Reverend Paul Kearney, uh, one of our regional witnesses, who is preaching. Take a break. Uh, Johnny will start last Tuesday. And many thanks to all the, those who helped with that. And just to remind you that it is weekly now, not fortnightly, weekly, uh, the usual time of the Tuesday, 10 till 12 noon. The weekly prayer meeting is at 7 pm as usual via Zoom, and I believe that's all. Okay. Yep, yeah, okay, I'll be signed off then. Hello everyone. Good morning. Everyone who's here, and everyone who's watching the recording as well. Today is Pentecost Sunday. And I'm not preaching on Acts chapter 2 today, or at least not here I'm not. I am actually preaching on Acts chapter 2 at Ashford Baptist Church by the power of modern technology. And if you want to hear a sermon on Acts chapter 2 and Pentecost, then you can tune in to there as well, can't you? A little bit later on. But uh, today is Pentecost, and I've chosen today to focus on missionary agencies and mission today, not so much the Holy Spirit. And the reason for this is because one of the main reasons, it's not the only reason, one of the main reasons the Holy Spirit was given was so that we could be empowered for service. As Acts 1 8 says, you will receive the Holy Spirit and you will be my witnesses. Also, I think there's a great danger for any church, be they small or great, to be parochial and not to remember that we are part of a, a local, body of, local body of Christians in Japan, in the region, in the nation, and in the world. We know that, don't we? Because we're our own mission church and we wouldn't exist without other Christians giving us money to help us. But even so, there's still a danger, and I find this myself as a pastor, of just thinking about this country. And um, I, I've often described that for myself because I believe I'm called to this country, but we mustn't forget the wider picture. So sometimes it's good to have a focus on missionary agencies. And today, in the service, you'll find out more about two missionary agencies that we have direct links with, by means of some of the videos that they have kindly provided me with. And uh, we'll say more about that in a moment uh, as we move along. And our worship today is provided by Proxy Green Baptist Church. I hear you think, well, that's New Rickman's work in Hertfordshire, and it just so happens that the uh, Associate Minister and her husband are friends of mine from my South End gave, so they've given me permission to share some of their worship uh, that they've put together uh, with us. So um, we're going to begin in a moment with um, a prayer that will come up on the screen. I'm going to pray first of all. So let's come to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we pray that as the Holy Spirit came in wind and fire to the apostles, so may he come to us breathing new life into our lives and setting our hearts aflame with love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Spirit of God, at the outset of time you hovered above the newborn chaos of an unformed world, 
You touched its foaming waters with colour and light, order and life, cycles of days and seasons, vapour and rain, bud, branch and fruit, power and imagination in the hand of our Creator. Spirit of life, renew us, refresh us, bring new creation to every layer of our being. Spirit of God, in the workings of history you touch the lips and hands of those who brought down kings and raised up nations, messengers of hope to the broken, challenge to the complacent, bearers of signs for those whose eyes had turned from you. Spirit of life, speak to us, speak through us, speak when we are still and ready, speak in the everyday when we are often absorbed with the demands of other voices. Spirit of God, your resting presence in word made flesh brought healing and wholeness to lives once shattered, stretched hands of love to those left rejected and alone, held crowds with words of wonder, left rulers seething with words of truth. Spirit of Christ, touch our lives afresh and make us more like you. Help us to grow into the fullness of your likeness. Spirit of God, in rushing wind and flame of fire, you poured yourself afresh into lives of those whose faltering steps were following you. Come upon us, we pray. Take our words, our thoughts, our dreams, our actions, that we might be heralds and servants of your gospel. Spirit of Pentecost, come upon your church with life and power. Build us into the people you would have us be. Kindle your fire and stir our hearts with the zeal of your kingdom. Pour out your water that we may be a stream of healing in a broken world. Blow like the wind to steer us to shores of your choosing. May your presence be seen in us. May your presence be known through us. Amen.
Now, in the last year, my wife has been doing children's talks on YouTube, luckily as part of the service. And uh, first of all, before we worked out how to join things together, we did them, uh, or she did them separately. And the one that she did for Pentecost last year, I thought, was particularly good. Some of you might remember it was the one with the experiment. Uh, so, some of you might not watch it, particularly other people did watch it. But anyway, um, rather than reinvent the wheel, I thought I'd play that again. Um, well, not here, but I'll play it here, but you, you can watch it again if you've already seen it. Uh, now, um, a talk on Pentecost and the meaning of Pentecost. And a little scientific experiment as well. Hiya, yeah, it's all good to have you here today. Hiya. Yeah. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday. It's the day when the Christian church throughout all the world celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit on the disciples and the beginning of the Christian church. You might remember that Jesus asked his followers to wait in Jerusalem after he ascended to heaven. Shall we look at the Bible verse? It's Acts 1, verse 8. Shall we read it together? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Wow. I've got something that I want you to do for me. Do you think you can? Okay, let's see. I want you... To be wind. When I put this picture up, can you blow? Do you think you can blow for me? Go <sighs> like that. Blow. And also I'll put this picture up as well. Do you think you can be fire? Can you go like this with your hands? I can only do one hand at the minute, but I think you can do both. Do you think you can do that? Right, are you ready? Let's read this. The Holy Spirit descended on the believers with a noise very loud wind can you blow this wind they were looking like fire too which rested on the people there this was how it seemed from the outside but from inside each person what do you think was going on well let's have a think hmm the disciples were stunned by the display of the power of God God meant business and was clearly it was way outside their comfort zone because God was in charge they suddenly knew at first hand what God's love really meant. They felt full, of, felt full of it. It made them very happy and very excited. They wanted to tell everybody about it. They wanted to tell other people about it too. They wanted everybody to know God like this because they knew how wonderful it was. And God's love in them made them want to share the good news rather than keep it to themselves. God is still pouring out his Holy Spirit on people today. Every day, whenever anyone seriously wants to have the powerful love of God living in them, the Spirit will come and fill them. That's what we're celebrating today. Well, I'm going to try an experiment today. And let's hopefully it won't go wrong, I hope. Well, I have got a cup of water. Well, a cup of clear liquid. It looks like water, doesn't it? So I've got that. And also, I've got a cup of... It looks a bit like sugar, doesn't it? Or flour. Could even be salt. But it's a white, white isn't it? So it could be sugar. So, well, what do you think will happen if I put them together? Shall we have a look? Shall we see? Shall we see? Are you ready for this? Let's get a little bit closer. 
There you go, you can see. Are you ready for this? Let's put some of this in and see what happens, shall we? Oh! Oh wow, that wasn't that that what I wasn't expecting that. Were you expecting that? But then if you use the right ingredients like this, it was actually it was vinegar. It was vinegar and it was bicarbonate bicarbonate soda and you get this sort of reaction. So but did you know of an even bigger reaction that occurs when you combine the power of God found in the Holy Spirit with your willingness of what he wants you to do. If you think that was fun, you should try combining the two. You see, these ingredients didn't do anything, did they? Until we put them together, the power of the Holy Spirit is a bit like that to us and it's available to us the holy spirit but we can ignore it you know we need to recognize the power of the holy spirit and be willing to use it then god can accomplish great things through us we need to combine the power of the holy spirit with our attention and our interest and our intention to make a difference to make a powerful reaction to be useful to, by God. But with that combination, we can really get an action. Who knows? Who knows what God can do with a person who is fully committed to him? Who knows what the future holds for each one of you children and the adults? If we give our lives wholly, wholly to him, because he just wants to be our friends. And he has lots of exciting stuff for us to do. We can get powerful reaction, look, by what we do. Amazing. So shall I just pray? Probably still keep coming up at the minute. I'm going to pray. So, dear God, I just ask for your Holy Spirit to fall on us and you give us what you and you guide us in what you want us to do lord and we get a reaction lord i just also ask for the children that are maybe going back to school this week lord i just ask that you be with them you look after them and you protect them and protect all the teachers as well that will be going back as well and lord also ask for all the parents that will be doing the homeschool and all the children that will be at home, Lord, and all the other teachers that will be putting computer stuff on the computer for them as well. I just ask that you look after us and you keep us all safe this week. And I ask for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye for now.
Experiments World Mission then is a Christian missionary society founded by Baptists from England in 1792. And it was originally called the Particular Baptist Society for the Propagation of the Gospel Among the Heathen. It was made for. But for most of its life, it was known as Baptist Missionary Society, and now is known since 2000 as BMS World Mission. They have an administrative headquarters in Didcot in England, for the Baptist Union. They also have a training centre called the International Mission Centre in Birmingham. And BMS was formed at a meeting in Kettering in 1792, where there was 12 particular Baptist ministers signed an agreement. The first missionaries, William Carey and John Thomas, were sent to Bengal in India in 1793. And today, BMS works in many ways around the world, as you will now see from uh, these uh, videos. Wondering what BMS World Mission is all about? BMS is a Christian mission organisation seeking to share life in all its fullness with the world by enabling people to know Christ, alleviating suffering and injustice, and improving the quality of life of the world's poorest and least evangelised people. In partnership with UK churches, we support between 350 and 400 Christians serving in over 30 countries on four continents. We help transform lives through six key ministries. Here's just a taster. In India, we support a team of local Christians to go and share the gospel with people who've never even heard of Jesus. Travelling by boat into incredibly rural villages, these believers have planted thousands of house churches and seen countless lives saved. We have people in Afghanistan setting up community development and renewable energy projects in volatile locations. In a world where knowing English is increasingly important, we send English teachers to countries including China and Thailand, empowering people to make a better future for their families. In Africa, we have BMS doctors and nurses delivering babies, performing life-saving operations, improving the quality of life for people living with AIDS and caring for the dying. We're offering hope and health to people living in some of the poorest countries in the world. In Mozambique and Uganda, Christian lawyers are standing for justice for the oppressed, helping women and children to know their rights, enabling families who have fled war in northern Uganda to access their land and fighting against gender-based violence. We're training pastors from across the Amazon jungle at our mission centre in Peru, providing theological training for leaders who have been isolated and serving with no teaching or encouragement. We're equipping the church leaders of the future. These are the kind of things that we're doing all over the world, but why? The highest goal of all we do is to bring people to faith in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and an experience of the abundant life that only He can provide. Get involved. To find out more about our work and the amazing role that you can play, visit bmswillmission.org. Mm -hmm. Give me a hand clap. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to go high time. No, that was nice. For a self clap. <laughs> when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for everything you've done to make the last 226 years happen. Thank you. That's approximately 82,500 days of action. We want to thank you for each and every one of you for all you have already done. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and for everything that's yet to come. If William Carey were here, he'd thank you himself. I'm sure he'd be overwhelmed and not think twice. But as he went to heaven 184 years ago, we hope us two will suffice. So to the churches, the birthday gifters, the one-off givers, without your BMS can't bring what it delivers. Even if it's just you forgot to cancel your direct debit, you, you still deserve, deserve some credit. credit. So from Afghanistan, that's a thanks and it's hand in hand with Ugandan standing brand spanking new with the crews in Peru thanking you when you choose to do what you do. Just as we can't function without food to eat or on tour you insist that I sing you to sleep every night. Just a car can't move without fuel in the tank, BMS can't work without you so it's you we thank. 
Whether it's church or development Health, education Justice, leadership, relief There are so many ways That you've openly changed the world Through the power of Christian belief whether it's the Netherlands or Lebanon, benevolence is selling them an element of heaven today. It really goes that deep in Mozambique and from the pool to all of y'all, we want to say thanks, gracias, thank you, arigato, mahalo, cheers, here's to you. As they say in Peru, merci beaucoup. If they happen to be speaking French in Peru, Mui. we want to thank you for everything that you have done to make the last 226 years happen. Thank you. That's approximately 1,980,000 hours of action. Yes, thank you. From Carrie's vision to Mary's church bake sale tradition. Oh, thank you. The Agnes' of sponges and the funds they have risen for that decision. We want to thank you. For all you have done to make the last 226 years happen. Oh, thank you. That's 82,500 sunrises and sunsets of action. We want to thank you. For each and every one of you, for all you have already done. Oh, thank you. And for everything that's yet to come. We thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank.
we also think of them uh, going and uh, and he pray in our binding. Pray for your blessing, protection upon the work of BMS World Mission in India, Afghanistan, China, Thailand, Africa, and all the different places in Africa where they work. Bangladesh, Chad, Cambodia. Lord, we pray for the future of BMS, that financial help may be made available. We pray for protection and refreshment for missionaries on furlough, travelling protection. We pray for the spread of the gospel throughout those continents where BMS works. And we thank you, Lord, that we are able and have been able through this chapter's history to play a small part in that global world. Our prayers for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now, um, as I said, the Gay Missionary Sunday, we think about other parts of the world, and I learned this week um, that Toto is going to be um, visiting Ghana uh, a little later in the summer. So, Toto, if you'd like to come up and speak to the microphone, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing. Take care of us. been a very, very difficult year for all of us. I think you, all of you know that we've been going through a lot of hardships. Um, last year in March, I was admitted in hospital and I was very, very, I was in a critical condition. And I want to thank the Lord that he restored my life. But since then, I haven't been okay. I haven't been all right to to come and join you or to come to join you online or anything because this illness had a, a big impact in my life. But I'm happy I'm getting better and I'm happy I'm back with you in this church to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. So I do a lot of charity. I, at the moment I work with St. Joseph as a volunteer. That is just my passion to work with people, to help people, to just be there for other people who, who are in need of help or who are in need of support in whatever way. So I was a calling, maybe something just told me that I should do something for other people in other nations outside this country, help them in any way which I thought of. So I thought of just going to uh, other countries and do a volunteer experience. So there was a list of countries, Nepal, Costa Rica, India, in Africa, South Africa, and in West Africa. So I chose Ghana. I'll be going there in July to work with women, women who need help, women who need skills to look after themselves, women who need to be empowered to work and um, uh, help their families. Well, because women, obviously, in Africa, most women, they rely on their uh, husbands for a living or food or shelter or anything. But we want to empower these women to work for themselves, to think for themselves, to plan for themselves and help their own families. So I'll be going um, beginning of July. I've been doing a lot of fundraising. Thank God, things have turned out very well. And I managed to source funds for my air ticket, for my insurances, for my program there, my accommodation and everything. All is set now. So I'm happy to tell you that I'll be going. Just pray, pray for me because it's a different culture. And many people think Africa is Africa and we are just the same people. We know each other and if we meet, we know each other. That's not the point. That's not the we don't know each other and we are different and we live differently, different cultures as well. So just pray for me so that I fit in that Western culture and I, um, I ask the Lord to be the one who will be driving me to do all the work and he will be just beside me all, all the time I'll be there. And I thank you. I know you've been praying for us, me and Godwin. I know you, you didn't tell me that you were praying, but I know you've been praying for us. And we'd like to thank you, thank you so much for your support. 
it is all through difficult times, but we are there for us. You don't tire, you are just there for us. Thank you, church. Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you ever so much, Toka, for sharing that. Let's pray together for Toka. Lord, we thank you uh, that you brought Toka through the last year, that you've raised her up through this illness. We pray for continued strength, physically, uh, mentally, uh, emotionally for her, Lord, and complete healing. And we thank you, Lord, that she's <coughs> making the decision to spend some time in Ghana, and we pray for travelling mercies, protection, and we ask for your provision when she's over there. Watch over her with your holy angels and may this trip glorify your name and bring hope and help to many people. We thank you, Lord, for uh, Godwin and Toko for their service to the church. And we pray for their own land also of Zimbabwe. That there may be a move of your spirit, that move that we long for to come in this country. May it come to Zimbabwe and to Ghana as well. Through Jesus our Lord. Change
and I'm going to present you with a brief update on the work of MAF UK. Thank you for your continued support and prayer in light of the COVID-19 pandemic and all of the work that MAF does. Thank you for continuing to partner with us to provide practical help, spiritual hope and physical healing to the least, the lost and the isolated in Christ's name. MAF's operational flying hours were down by about 50% in 2020. And at the start of 2021, we are seeing an increase and uptake on our flying hours compared to the tail end of 2020. But they're not quite at the levels at the start of 2020 pre-COVID-19 pandemic. The impact of COVID-19 hasn't simply been the threat and danger of the virus itself. Due to the subsequent lockdowns and lack of international travel, MAF, like many missions and humanitarian organisations, have struggled to transport their staff in and out of programmes. This has hampered the reach that we have been able to have and has sometimes limited the number of flights in which we could fly. In addition to this, many of our operational partners have experienced the same situation. They have not been able to transport their staff in order to respond to the pandemic and other crises around the world. And as a, as a result, there's been a decline in the demand for MAF flights. In reality, for many of the people and communities that we face, the isolation may have sheltered them from the COVID pandemic in the short term. But these effects often are felt for lo much longer scale and period of time in the developing world due to the lack of infrastructure and healthcare and education on how to really combat viruses like COVID-19. Ultimately, it's just the same problem in a different format, a different means on a, on a different day. Really, the civil issues, the humanitarian issues, the climatic issues and their health issues have not gone away. But because of the COVID-19 impact on lockdowns in programmes that we fly and the international restrictions, this has meant that those same problems that were being tackled were being dealt with those solutions weren't as readily available as they were. So COVID-19 is a two-pronged effect. There's the threat of the virus itself, its transmittability and its effect on human health is a serious impact and a serious threat. But the implications of restricting the work of ourselves and our mission partners really cannot be overlooked either. So what have we been doing then in response to the COVID-19 pandemic? MAF has been partnering with the World Health Organization and the COVAX scheme in order to fly the AstraZeneca vaccine in Kalimantan, Indonesia and in Lesotho. And there are plans in place for MAF to partner in these COVAX flights in another 17 potential countries. MAF is considered the last leg or the last mile of the journey in transporting vaccines like this and many others like the uh, malaria and measles and MMR vaccines that are frequently in use as well around the developing world. Where then in particular is your valuable prayer time best spent? Well please allow me to provide three key areas of prayer where MEF and our mission partners would most benefit at this time. First of all and the most obvious one is the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. As I discussed in this video, many of the communities might have seen a delayed reaction, but that doesn't mean that the impacts are going to be any less worse in the future. Please pray for those in the hardest to reach places. While COVID-19 might, COVID might not yet have reached them, there's still an impending threat and it reminds them of the many issues that they already face on a daily basis. Please pray for continued provision of allowance for MAF to fly the special permits needed in order to respond and for our partnership with the World Health Organization and the surrounding communities in which we serve to provide a, uh, an effective and critical means of vaccination. Secondly, I'd invite you to pray for world peace. This isn't a new issue, but as many of us are aware, there have been many great political and civil unrest crises around the world. Please pray in particular for our work in Myanmar that is only just starting to set out and please also pray for Chad and South Sudan as greater political issues mount. And thirdly, please pray for a restructuring of the international community and the ability to transport staff. As I discussed, MAF have struggled to transport our own staff in the same way that many of our mission partners 
have done so as well. Please pray for a, a release and a safe and effective means to transport staff in order to continue and restart in some key areas the critical work of MAF and those we support and enable. Thank you so much for your time. God bless. We travel all over to help people in remote place in Madagascar. We have to bring all our stuff. Everything we need, medicines, uh, surgical staff, uh, uh, ultrasound, uh, there is nothing there. I see the people's life in rural area and Actually, they don't have any hospital to access when they are sick. This is a 100 mobile medical service. We treated about 37,000 patients uh, so far, and we uh, visited 42 communities. We, we stay around five to 10 days. We can start from 8.30, it depends on the situation. It happened that we work until 3 in the morning. It, if there is too much surgery, we can do surgery by, by night. The girl we did uh, did the operation this morning, and uh, she's fine. Even she start to eat something now. After MAP came, the people started to understand their health, their lifestyle, their, their children's education. The first time when we arrived there, the only two or three students are studying at the school. Now there are more than 200. We always look forward for partnership with MAF because it's a big help for us, big help for Malagasy people. Every time we go to rural area with MAP, I found how much MAP contributes to this country, how much they collaborate well with other organizations and the local people. Without MAP's help, it cannot be happened.
Good morning and thank you for inviting us to join your celebration today. My name is Steve. And my dear Smey, and we both work with BMS World Mission. Steve as a doctor in the Congo for 12 years and, there's a, and then as director of BMS partner in Tunisia for 14 years. And I also worked in Tunisia for nine years as a palliative care nurse. What an exciting day, celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit. There was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. Many of us have been praying together with the Thy Kingdom Come initiative uh, for the past 10 days. This started in 2016 with the Archbishops of York and Canterbury and has spread globally. And we're praying to see God's kingdom come here on earth. But what does God's kingdom look like? We've heard about wind and fire and different languages that other people could understand. But what else? Well, there's the fulfilment of prophecy, the prophecy of Joel. There's the declaration of the message of Jesus. There's repentance and the forgiveness of sins, a release from the burden of guilt and shame. There is a, a way out of this sick and stupid culture, as Peterson puts it in his paraphrase. There is a public declaration of a change through baptism and the commitment to the teaching of the apostles of praying and eating together. There's unity of heart and mind. There's a sharing of possessions and care for those who are in need. There's a powerful witness to the resurrection of Jesus and a sense of grace. Well, all goes well, and, but then there are soon some logistic difficulties in the distribution of food to the needy, and that's resolved by appointing seven administrators. And these are commissioned by the apostles. But then comes persecution, suffering, a scattering. It's no longer possible to meet together. People are, are stuck far apart. In a sense, there is lockdown. No means of contacting via social media and telephone, though. Those who are poor and vulnerable suffer the most. There are no longer any handouts of food or other necessities. Does that sound familiar? We're facing this situation ourselves, not just here in the UK, but globally. BMS World Mission works in some of the most fragile and vulnerable states in the world. This little video clip we're going to show you now indicates some of the things that BMS is doing in different parts of the world. The world is united by an enemy. A virus that is stealing lives and spreading fear. For years to come, we will be remembered for how we responded. For staying home and protecting our communities. And also for loving our global neighbors. We will be remembered for praying, for giving, to help them respond. In Afghanistan, Nepal, Mozambique, Sri Lanka, Chad, Albania and across the globe, for feeding the hungry, for counselling the sick, for providing protective equipment on the front lines, for helping to stop the spread, Remembered for being united, together. Remembered for standing in solidarity. The world is hurting and we can help. BMS World Mission is responding to the coronavirus pandemic. We're helping to coordinate the Global Baptist response and we're doing it now in the name of Jesus. You can be a part of it. You can stand in solidarity with people around the world fighting coronavirus and feeling its effects. You can look back on this time and know that you did everything in your power to help. You can respond today.
I love the way BMS is able to respond so quickly to these needs because of its partnerships and personnel around the world and also the generous giving of the churches. We read now in Acts 9 that they came through this crisis and they enjoyed a period of peace. But then the Holy Spirit acts again. It's a wonderful turning point in the unfolding story of the kingdom of God and a pivotal chapter in Acts. We read in Acts 10 that God shows that the kingdom includes, wait for it, Gentiles. And Peter has his epiphany. As it says in the message, he exploded with his good news. It's God's own truth. Nothing could be plainer. God has no favourites. It makes no difference who you are and where you come from. If you want God and you're ready to do as he says, the door is open. And this is another sign of the presence of the kingdom. It breaches all barriers. It transcends all cultures. Jesus is for everyone. And so the scattered believers start talking to Greeks. And suddenly a church is born in Antioch which soon becomes a significant sending church. Of course, this catches the attention of the church in Jerusalem and they send Barnabas to investigate. And we read in Acts from the message, it says, as soon as he arrived, he saw that God was behind it and threw himself in with them, got in behind them, urging them to stay with it the rest of their lives. See, here we have another mark of the kingdom of God at work, teamwork, enthusiasm. And then some prophets come from Jerusalem to join the work and they bring a prophetic warning. It was about this time that some prophets came to Antioch from Jerusalem. One of them, named Agabus, stood up one day and prompted by the Spirit warned that a severe famine was about to devastate the country. The famine eventually came during the reign of Claudius. So the disciples decided that each of them would send whatever they could to their fellow Christians in Judea to help out. And they sent Barnabas and Saul to deliver the collection to the leaders in Jerusalem. Isn't this amazing? that the church plant should send back gifts to the church that planted them. The Greeks should be sending gifts to the Jewish believers. I remember a number of years ago, uh, seeing some of the financial accounts of the church in Banzangungu in the Congo. And they decided back in the 1930s to send a financial gift to the churches in Britain. I find that amazing. So here is the church in Acts anticipating the suffering that was to come to the church in Jerusalem and sending a gift in advance to support them. I wonder what the believers in Jerusalem thought. Oh, should we take the money from uh, Greeks and from Gentiles? But here we see in practice how when one part of the body suffers, other parts suffer with them and join together to, to support the suffering part. This is a mark of the kingdom. And so we're encouraged to act in solidarity with Jesus followers and help those who are in distress, even though we are too. And what is the effect of this? What impact will this have? BMS's partner in Tunisia has been distributing food parcels and hygiene products to the poor and vulnerable in Tunisia. And here is the story of one widow an example of the way this initiative is impacting the lives of individuals. Latifa is a widow living in Sfax with her 12-year-old son. She's been struggling to afford enough to live on and someone alerted the team to her situation. One team member was able to help her and deliver a food parcel to her door. The following day, the team member heard from Latifa's friend that she'd been in tears on the phone, so grateful and so surprised by the love and concern of strangers, and not just strangers, but Christians. She was deeply touched, not only by the gift of food, but also by the respect shown to her, an insignificant widow. 
This surely is a mark of the kingdom. What marks of the kingdom are there in our lives? How is the Holy Spirit prompting us? Are we experiencing the joy of forgiveness and freedom from guilt that comes from giving our lives to Jesus? Are we able to follow the teaching from his word given by those who are gifted in this way? Are we joining in fellowship through prayer and encourage one another in our walk with Jesus? Are we conscious of the needs of those around us, both locally and globally? This isn't meant to be a checklist to depress us. No, this is a day of celebration. For he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And he is able to do far more abundantly than we can ask or imagine. So on this Solidarity Sunday, BMS is inviting us to join together in prayer for the needs of our world and hold up in prayer those who are the most vulnerable in this coronavirus pandemic. We may be separated by lockdown, but we have the technology to help us fellowship together. Come on, let's celebrate and pray for our world, for God's spirit to come. Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 